Welcome back. I'm going to do another acrylic. Well, I'm going to make this one up based on experience. It's a woodland scene. So we've got lemon yellow, yellow ochre, white. It's got to get a bit floppy now because it's on the stay wet pattern. It soaks up quite a bit of moisture over three days. And, uh, some vermilion, some alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt sienna, black possibly, and viridian. Uh, for uh, for good darks, viridian mixed with alizarin crimson is pretty good. But we'll see how we go. I like black. I, I think it mixes great with the lemon yellow. But uh, we'll, we'll we'll see. So we'll, we'll do some silver birches. Let's uh, so let's have some sort of planning here. Uh, where's my pencil? There we go. I use mostly graphite sticks when I'm drawing, so we'll have we'll have a bit of a bit of a path coming into the picture. Uh, some this could be water. Yeah, let's make it water, watery after a storm in a, in a wood. So we'll start by roughing in the sky. I think. Um, I'm just going, I'm going to straighten with the paint. A bit of ultramarine. I'm not going to pay too much attention to to what's at the, the, the back of this because it's going to be covered up. I've primed this paper with uh, it's watercolor paper, 140 pounds. I got it cheap in Florida in Marshalls, and it's it's good. It's it's not bad paper, but I'm, I've never really. Got used to it for watercolours, wet and wet. But I used it a lot. I, I did 12, 13 demonstrations on YouTube from Florida last November. I didn't want to publish the fact that I wasn't here. But I just uploaded them and sat mostly in my sister's garden, the house there, and toiled away while other chores were being done about the place and had some great, great fun. Lovely holiday. Uh, just mixing blue with with the bit of ultramarine. Because I, th th these are taking, well I'm Painting them about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. They're taking quite a long time to, to upload and compress, or compress and upload. So that'll do for the sky for the moment. <coughs> now we'll uh, just put in a bit of a reminder here. And we'll have, we'll have some going off in the distance here. I might do this in two goes, carry on tomorrow because I've done two today already and it's quite absorbing, especially when they don't quite as well as you'd like. Uh, I did struggle a bit with the, the last one but You'll find that as you progress with the picture, it, it has a stage where it's really looking good. It's starting to come together, but then all of a sudden it goes downhill. <coughs> then you have to uh, really dig deep and uh, bring it back again. It always does come back. There's always a solution. Uh, my solution was to put a tree in the far bank that didn't actually exist in my original painting that I copied it. Well, I didn't copy it from. I just did a version of it. So this is this is the uh, the background, the trees in the distance, and we can have warmer colours coming into this. It's all good fun. 
I like this uh, vermilion, I don't usually use it. I, I got it just to do puppies. And now all my paintings are going to have puppies in it. Well, probably the last one. Well, it's a lovely flash of red, isn't it? That's so, so attractive. Right, okay, we'll come on it. Put a bit of a, let's put a bit of a foreground in. This is the roughing out stage. I've got a cup of tea here, which is getting cold. It's good working from your imagination. Although I must say that most of my paintings are not copies of, of photographs, they're based on photographs, they're just an interpretation of what I like to do. I'm just going to clean, clean my white off here and start again. I'm using my white, this Galleria, Winsor & Newton. It just so happens to, to be Galleria, it could have been another, it could have been Class Olsen. Which is, which is, we have a branch near here, and they do some inexpensive acrylics. And I usually buy their white, which is uh, the Liquitex, I think. No, it's not French. Louvre. Louvre. Le Franc, Le Franc, et Bourgeois. So, French or Belgian. Right, okay, but let's. Uh, Put some foreground and some background in it. Now, what I want a dark, I want a dark colour. So I'm going to mix. I'm going to use the, the blue and the black and the lemon yellow. And I'm just going to dob it about a bit. I'm going to put some silver brushes in this. I love silver brushes. My silver brushes don't actually exist. A bit of burst, burst yellow and a bit of black. You know, I'm now painting over what I put in, but it's always the light contrasted with the with the uh, with the darks that make a picture. Always be aware of of contrast. Bit of yellow in there. It's just building up a texture. I'm going to put my water in, back, back in this. We're just building up texture at the moment. Remember, reds contrast with greens. If you want a red to look redder, put it next to a, a green. Warm, warm and dark. It's warm and cool. Now we'll just put in some, some of this here. So, so. And this dries very, very quickly. I'm not adding any medium to it. If I did, it would only be the dilute PVA glue. As if I didn't show you earlier. I've got this big pot of, big kilogram, kilogram. I've had this years. I just dilute it with a bit of water and keep some handy. Great for varnishing, great for um, priming both sides of the paper here. Mix a bit of red in for that. that black. I've got loads of, I've got a big tube, well, not a big tube, but the tube that I hardly use, my poppy tube. Don't want to go too high with this, but we can put a bit of a hill in. And then we're back in there. A bit of orange. Try not to repeat yourself. Very easy. Forget that to do two symmetrical sides. A uh, bit, bit of blue in there now. A bit of blue, a bit of red. Just a bit of 
Que le fameux Germain Barret. So we want to put in some background trees to fill in this now. So I have another brush. Swig of tea. And we'll uh, I'll just clean the centre of my palette here. A bit of tissue. And keep the paints quite clean. And so I want a sort of a, a grey blue for distant foliage. The Belizean. I'm just scumming that in. And I can get the lights of the sky shining through that. It's very good to do it. I've lost them down. It's going right up into the uh, top of the paper. And a bit darker there. And this will definitely, definitely be part one of two, at least. Okay, right now we're going back in with the sky. Clean the brush. My back's aching now. So we've, we've merged this in with the sky. So just a little bit of, bit of red, a bit of ochre, a bit of lizard. Too much. You just keep working over and building up a, an impasto surface. I could have, have, have um, gessoed this with some plaster powers, but uh, it's quite difficult with the PVA glue, it sort of dries so quick and it clumps a bit, but that's okay, it just makes it interesting. Hey look, we're getting a bit of bit of bit of mystery coming in there now. Now I'll go back to this uh, blue colour. So we'll have this light bit going through the uh, through the centre. There. We can do lots of background trees into, the, into that. to the thing, the, the swing of these acrylics. Well, I'm just, just scumbling over, trying to keep this light bit going. Side. Oh, I just missed that a little bit. See? 
See what happens. Hitting the high spots and that. Right, so I reckon that's a good start. That, that'll do for part one, I think. Part two will be to strengthen up all this, start putting in some background trees, and then the, the silver birches, then we'll put some landscape, some, some of the, the soil going across here, and then we'll highlight some of these. So that will be part one. Thanks for watching. We'll call this a woodland scene, woodland scene in acrylic, part one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.